Welcome to worship on this 14th Sunday after, I was going to say Epiphany, after Pentecost. Um, pretty soon I'll be saying it's after Easter or something and we'll really have no idea where we are. Uh, anyways, good to see folks here this day. Um, just some things to share with you. I've been announcing, you've seen everywhere. This is the Tuesday the building is closed because of, there'll be no electricity. They're ch changing out the pole in the back. I don't know how long it's going to take, but the parking lot will be blocked. So coming in that door will be interesting. The electronic one won't work. So this is not the day to go, oh, I'll just stop by the church and. Also, the office will be closed because there's not really a whole lot we can do without electricity either. We can't answer the phone. We can't use computers. So that means also Sharon will be here Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week just to kind of help out. Hopefully that will work. And you also saw in the announcements this week, Food Truck is gonna be here in a couple weeks. Rose would love to have some help doing that. If you could make sure Rose Christman knows that you'll be there to help her, that would be awesome. Those are the little notes I made for this morning as we gather, but are there things you all would like to share? I see Bob wandering his hand up here. <laughs> oh, thank you for that confidence. <laughs> We're here to confuse you even more. <laughs> Thank you. Others? Well, then, seeing no hands, I would invite you to take just a few moments and to prepare your hearts for worship.
Please join me in the confession and forgiveness. Trusting in the word of life given to us in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For our confession and forgiveness this day, we are using the words to our psalm. And so I'm going to invite our lector for today, Joel, to come up and lead us in the confession. The psalm is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 10. We'll read it responsibly. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak, and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body which the broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to take just a few moments for hopefully we have some kids joining us online to be with them for just a few moments. So good morning all of you. I'm hoping you're doing fine and school's going okay, been in for maybe a couple weeks. We're going to have some kids showing up here this week, so I'm excited to see them. Today I'm going to talk to you about something we read in our gospel text. Okay, um, I know I brought what I was going to show you. What did I do with it, though? What did I do with it? It's not up here. I don't see it over there. Can you see anything funny over there? I had a sheep. I can't find my sheep. I had a sheep. What did I do with my sheep? I wished you were here and you could help me find my sheep. I don't see my sheep anywhere. I see my sheep. Where's my sheep? Okay, I was in my office. Oh, there's my sheep. Oh, thank you for finding my sheep. I'll just leave it there and it can come to me. What do you think? Should I just leave it there and let it come to me? You don't think I should do that, huh? What do you all think? Should I just leave my sheep there and let it come to me? Go get it. Go get it. That was awfully authoritative. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll come get my sheep. Thank you. Somebody else helped me locate it because I knew I had it somewhere. Here's my sheep. Yay! This stands on my nightstand. I love my sheep. It's all squishy. I brought my sheep today to help me remember how God looks for us and searches us out no matter where we are. Because sometimes we get lost, even under the best circumstances. We wander away just like sheep do. I kind of forgot where I put it. I needed help. Wish you guys could have helped me too. Jesus tells a couple parables about things that are lost. And you know what? Neither one of those things goes and finds somebody. Person goes and finds them. Jesus loves us so much that he searches for us and helps us. When we get lost, when we kind of wander a little bit astray, and he rejoices when we come back. When we mess up, he forgives us and always helps us come back home. So I'm going to hold on tight to my sheep because I know Christ holds on tight to me and he does to you too. Let's pray. 
Jesus, it's so easy to get lost. Kind of like that sheep you told the parable about. We put our heads down and we do what we want and we all of a sudden find out we're not doing what you ask of us. Thank you for seeking us out, for finding us, for putting us on your shoulders, for dying for us on a cross and bringing us home to you. Help us to seek out those who are lost too and share your love. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we join in our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This day we are going to be using more liturgy than we're, we usually do, and we're going to be using setting three. So our hymn of praise, canticle of praise, this day is This is the Feast. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care that we may reject what is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 32, verses 7 through 14. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf, and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that, I, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like stars of heaven, and all this land I have promised I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost." But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The, Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them a parable. Which of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after one that is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents 
than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. We're going to do something a little different today. We've done it before, and we're doing it again. You get to talk. Okay, that's not a threat. It's an invitation. Let me get to that part in my little book here. We're putting that so that folks who are online can maybe hear at least some of our comments, because that's always one of the comments I get back is, when you do that, we can't hear what's going on online, so we're hoping to at least get some feedback. But I'm doing this because today, for many of us, is a somber day, celebration, whatever you want to call it. It is September 11th. And like generations before us who could maybe come up with those answers to things like, where were you when Pearl Harbor was bombed, when we landed on the moon, when Kennedy was shot? I look around here and I'm confident that each one of us have asked or answered the question, where were you when the towers came down? So as I prepared for today's service and sat with these lessons, this day just kind of screamed at me as an opportunity to sit with scripture and reflect upon our lives and experience. And also to hear God's promise. So that's what we're going to do. I usually look at lessons on Sunday afternoon so that I can sit with them all week so that hopefully by Thursday or Friday or Saturday I can write the sermon. And it's where I started on Sunday and I've tried different ways to do something different and I'm still here. So this is what we're we're doing today. We read those texts from Luke's Gospel, the 15th chapter. I'm standing up for at least a little while. Um, And... It's the chapter of the lost. We heard those first two parables in Luke 15, the lost sheep and the lost coin. And that's pretty Lucan. If you read through that gospel, often there are paired either parables or events, one where a male is the main character and the second one where a woman is the main character, both teaching the same lesson. It's Luke's way of talking about the inclusivity of Christ. There's one more lost parable in Luke 15, It's the prodigal son. We don't read that in our our year of Luke. I think we read it in Mark. But the whole chapter is about lost and God finding. And if you think about it, in all of those parables, the finder makes no sense. I mean, no one in their right mind would leave 99 sheep in a very scary wilderness to go after one. And no woman is going to sleep, sweep the house all day, find a coin, and spend more money than the thing was worth to throw a party. They just don't make sense. It's crazy. But that's who our God is. Crazy. Crazy in love with us. Crazy in love with the world that God will do whatever it takes. We'll seek out the lost even when those who are lost don't know they're lost. Yes, even when that lost one is you and me. In many ways, that Tuesday in September, 21 years ago, caused us to experience being lost in ways we could have never imagined. And our actions and reactions since then have kind of borne that out. As we watched those towers go down and heard news stories, we lost a sense of comfort, of normalcy, of feeling safe. 
And we've lost some of our freedom since those days, years now, past. And if all of that wasn't enough, the losses have piled up since March of 2020 in a pandemic, when it was no longer off in some weird country over there, but on our shores, yes, literally on our shores, because the first COVID U.S. case was in Seattle. So, today I'm going to ask us to name those losses, to think of the ways we have experienced being lost over the last years, and to just have some conversation about that. You can talk about them however you've experienced them, maybe it's personally, corporately, within your family, whatever. Where were you? when the towers came down? What has changed in your life? What do you still grieve? This is now where you get to talk. So you can stay where you are, you can go to the mic, do what's comfortable. But let's talk about what it feels like to be lost.
I was at my mom's place. I had taken a leave of, not a leave of absence, I did my final semester of seminary um, independent study because she was diagnosed with terminal cancer and needed someone to care for her while she went under, underwent treatment. She died the first week of August. And by the end of August, I was done with all of those things you do when somebody dies, you know, the funeral and all of the plans and everything else, and decided it was finally time to start cleaning the place out because I knew I wouldn't be staying there. I had suspended my search for a first call, letting the bishop know to where I had been assigned, that I wouldn't be seeking first call till I knew what was going on in my family. So until about 10 o'clock Denver time, I had no clue what was going on. I was cleaning out a pantry and finding cans that were dated like five years ago and all of those strange things that end up in the back of closets. And I finally sat down because um, the Price is Right was coming on and I figured that was a great time to have a cup of coffee and relax. Well, Price of Right wasn't on. It was the unending reel of one plane and then another going into the towers. And by then, we knew about the attack on the Pentagon in Pennsylvania. My first thought was to call my brother to make sure he knew he was at work. He goes, yeah, I knew. And I'm like, really, you didn't call me? <laughs> And then my second thought was, my mom was a first, is a first, was a first generation American. Her, both of her parents from different parts of Russia had immigrated during the Bolshevik Revolution. And so my second thought was, for the first time in a month, I was glad she wasn't alive and saw this attack on a country that their families had given everything up for. When I think of COVID, in the first part of it, I was like, my, um, we can do this, you know, kicked immediately in. Here's what we need to do. Da, 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 da. It's only going to be two weeks. You know, so, okay, let's figure out how to go online. Let's do this. Let's do this. And, you know, all of that franticness. And I didn't think it would be that bad. What was the weirdest thing, and still I would say has been the weirdest thing throughout all of this, is I had packed out the stuff from my office that I figured we would need while we were <laughs> in hiatus. And the last thing that I took out of here was the picture that's in the library that's of that back wall, because I wanted something that looked like the sanctuary while we were online. And I walked out the back door and before I walked out, I stood in front of the door and I looked back. And I thought, I don't know when I'll be, in this, be able to be in this, back in this building again. And that's when it became real. That unknowing. And that sense of unknowing has been one of the, one of the losses that still I grieve. everybody at work was talking about it, and I think there's many of them on the night shift, but <laughs> still. Anyway, and then as far as COVID, we had just gotten back from a cruise from Hawaii oh, in Eastern right. California, and we were staying to visit our kids for a week, and I remember be the day before we got off the ship or something, I happened to go in one of the bathrooms, and these ladies were talking, and they're saying, yeah, did you hear about that new bug that's around there? They're going to they're gonna quarantine this ship. We're not going to get you off tomorrow. Oh. And I was like, oh my goodness, I better find out something
Yeah. Go ahead, Deb. Oh. And it was my first conversation with a holy person. Really? And as far as uh, COVID is concerned, <coughs> on Easter Sunday, my granddaughter brought my great grandkids out. And they, I got to, I was heading to the house, and they were out on the sidewalk <coughs> playing hopscotch. <laughs> with their cats. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. We had more council meetings in six months than we would have had for two years. We had something like 21 council meetings in 2020. Others this morning. Well, as we think of some of the things that we've lost, maybe the things that have shared that have resonated with you, I want to take just a short look at that text we read from Exodus this morning. Because here are some folks who really do feel lost. I mean, what we notice is that if you think about how they describe ex that event, that Exodus event, they never refer to the liberation. In their minds, they were brought from one horrible place and plopped down in another horrible place. And they missed the God who was with them through all of this, this God who released them from the bondage of slavery. It's like fear has kind of short-circuited their senses, and that's what fear does. Yeah, they're awestruck about, you know, the rumble of God's voice in the mountains. But by the time we get to today's text, it's like they've been festering in their fears for such a long time that they have a hard time seeing what God might be up to and calling them to. Because when we dwell in fear, we lose touch with our bodies. And when we lose touch with who we are created to be, it's really easy to lose touch with our God. But we got to be careful not to make light of the folks in the wilderness because I know I sometimes do that. I'm like going, see, God did all these things and all they're out there doing is grumbling because isn't that part of our life too? <laughs> it's always something to grumble about. But being in the wilderness in the desert in Sinai is real. There's this constant possibility of dying. 
dying from not having enough water, dying from not having enough food. And it's real. And it seems like the only person who can get him out of this, Moses, has just disappeared into a towering inferno, i.e. the burning bush. So it's real that they're feeling lost and afraid. Because death in the desert wouldn't have been pretty. Those who were most healthy could, were doomed to watch those who were young or ailing die first. And fear confuses them. And it's not unwarranted. So we don't really condemn them for that first size. We empathize with their fear because we know that fear. We felt it. And today you've named some of those things that are part of our reality, that little bit of fear or confusion or what in the world, when is this ever going to stop? That's part of our reality, just like it was for our wilderness wandering ancestors. And just like they can miss what God has done for them, so often we miss what our Savior does for us and calls us to do. Yet even in the midst of their grumbling, there is rejoicing. If you go back to Exodus 15, you see where Moses and the Israelites break into song. And if you're like me and you kind of grew up with some campy songs, you might hear a song in this, and I'm not guaranteeing I'm not going to break into song when I read it. Um, but they break into this song as, I will sing unto the Lord, for he is triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider are going into the sea. The Lord is God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Anybody ever hear that song? <laughs> no, you haven't. Okay. Different generation, obviously. But they're rejoicing. And then a little while later, Miriam picks up a tambourine, and all of the women go marching out, and they're singing, and they're dancing, and ringing their tambourines. And scripture says, and Miriam sang to them about how God had been faithful to them, even when it didn't feel like it. It's a Thanksgiving festival. So this morning, we are also going to spend some time talking about some of the rejoicing that has happened, some of the signs of God's presence in our lives, the things that are like putting that sheep on the shoulder and coming back, throwing the party, as we hear in both of those texts this morning. What are some of the ways, i got to read my little notes here and make sure I'm at least somewhat following what I came up with. What are some of the things that you have rejoiced about since September 11, 2001? Where have you seen God present and at work, even in the midst of our lament of what is lost? Yeah, Ben. Marriages are are some of the things. Mm Mm-hmm. And grandkids being born. I'm going to say, I've seen lots of pictures of grandkids and great-grandkids being born. Ah, pet, yes. Oh, Dan, yeah. Yeah. It's your birthday, yay. Ha <laughs> ha. 
And Bob's just like, no, no. The Bible says God is who God is and not who I am. But I love that, that God forgets as angry as I get and then changes. And I think that's one of the things that bothers me most about 9-11 is that we didn't change our mind. We got really angry and we went to war and we killed millions of innocent civilians of nothing to do with it. Iraq had nothing to do with it. And, um, you know, we're just not like God. And we really, really screwed up. Just, and hopefully God is still forgiving us and going after us and going to change my mind. A couple rejoicings for me, one from each big event. Not so much 9-11, but I'm sure it had something to do with it. Since my mom's death, my brother and I actually have a relationship. I, my, we're nine, almost nine years apart, so we grew up totally separate and only communicated through my mom. <laughs> and that could have gone either way, where we had totally gone apart when she died, but it actually brought us closer. And we talk now probably at least four or five times a week. I finally know my brother. Some things I wished I didn't know about him, but <laughs> I finally know him. And second with COVID is you. I wasn't sure how we would come through this. And whether that would totally destroy the congregation, because I didn't go to school on how to get through a pandemic and lead a congregation. We had never done anything online, didn't know how that was going to work. Had a pretty much newly elected council who I felt so bad for because none of them signed up for it. What was going to happen? And you were all incredibly faithful and flexible, and willing to try and do, and put up with, and whatever word you want to put in there. I want to close today kind of as, as often as Lutherans as we do ritually. Kind of like what we see in these texts. Um, it's going to be framed in prayer. First we're going to lament together. I'll offer kind of an opening prayer, invite you to name just some basic laments, some losses. It can be the ones you shared or not. And then there'll be another prayer. And then we'll do the same thing with rejoicing. So let us pray. Gracious God, though years have passed, the events of September 11th, 2001, still rip at the hearts of so many and tear at the stoles of so many more. As we remember and lament that day and all that has happened since, from war to pandemic, from divisions to hate crimes, we feel too often as though we are walking through that valley of the shadow of death. In the midst of our memories, not only of the events of 9-11, but of all the losses we have experienced since, we gather before you, O oh God, our rock and our refuge. You are our only comfort. You are our only hope. Merciful God, know you know the depths of our suffering and our struggling. Hear us as we name those feelings of loss that we have experienced.
Faithful God, surround us with your everlasting arms. Hear our cries and heed our calls for justice. And remind us again that you are the one who searches for the lost until we are found once more. Renew in us the gift of hope. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Knowing that in Christ we do have hope, we have healing, we are indeed found. Let us also offer a time of thanksgiving and rejoicing. And we'll follow that same pattern. And in the silence, you can talk. This isn't just in the silence of your heart. I know, I know I'm asking you to do something weird. It's okay. Let us rejoice in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we humbly thank you for your goodness to us and to all that you have made. We praise you for your creation, for keeping us and all things in your care, and for all the blessings of life. Here are words of praise and thanksgiving for the things that have happened in our lives in these interceding years. eyes to see new ways. Above all, we bless you, O God, for your measurable love in redeeming the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with thankful hearts we praise you, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving ourselves to your service and by living in your gifts of holiness and righteousness all our days. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all worship and praise now and forever. Amen. The slides say we're going to sing softly and tenderly. We're going to sing something else. So grab that book that's in front of you. Turn clear to the back. As soon as I get unhooked from my watch. To 887, which is This Is My Song. And I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together.
catch up with us live show and share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now turn our hearts to prayer, praying for all according to their need. Your people receive mercy and your grace overflows in our lives, O God. Fill your church with faith and love. Give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious communities. Tune our hearts and eyes to see and seek the lost. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Renewing God, your creation groans as it suffers the impacts. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Heal lands being scorched by fires and restore those straining from floods. And for all who work so diligently dealing with these and other disasters, Watch over them, protect them, and strengthen them. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gathering, Lord, your children wander homeless and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in any kind of need. Especially we lift before you today in prayer, Alan and Roger. We pray for the family and friends of Beb Cowderberg. We pray for Michael and Samson, Kelly, Cook and Lynn, for Steve, Berna, and all who are on our hearts. We also lift in prayer those who mourn the death of Queen Elizabeth II, the people of the United Kingdom, and for King Charles III as he leads. God's of gra God of grace, God. forming God. Your work is done in this congregation through our hands, feet, and voices, with our minds and our hearts. Build up our congregational ministries, both those done locally and as we partner with others around the world. We remember before you in prayer this day, Young Life in Central and Eastern Europe and Alan Stacy Anderson, and we pray for the Tunamani School in the Ulanga Kambaro Diocese of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Tanzania, that together we might serve our neighbor, find the lost, and welcome the stranger, no matter where they are. God of grace, gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God. We offer these and all our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I would invite you to share a sign of peace as you and those around you are most comfortable.
I do stand as we sing together our offertory this day, Create in Me. You notice that was the last verse of our song this day. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. mighty and merciful Lord heaven and earth are full of your glory we've got something ringing okay in great love you sent to us Jesus your son who reached out to heal the sick and suffering who preached good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to all in the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Things of God for the gathered people of God. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. By the congregation to be seated. Um, we will commune this side and then this side. Please come through the center aisle. I'll place the bread in your hand and then please pick up a cup either with wine or grape juice, whichever you're most comfortable with. Keep that with you and please put it in the containers on the far end of the pews as you go back to your seat by the side aisles. Once again, everything is gluten-free so that all may commune with us. Come, this is Christ's table and all, all, including the lost, are welcomed here.
invite you to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace, and may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Sing one more time together as we sing, Lord, speak to us that we may speak. Christ beside you.